All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been teaching Java programming using mainly an iterative payroll application, and it's supposed to dovetail pretty much with our textbook, which is starting out with Java from Control Structures Through Objects, 6th edition by Tony Gaddis. And I'm up to chapter 11, and I've got this unhandled exception. If you want to handle an exception, you'd use the try-catch blocks. Java required all checked exceptions to be properly handled by the caller, either in a try-catch or by adding throws. Now, what it could be here might have to put my throws statement here. T-H-R-O-W-S, um, and I'm not sure if this is right or not, but empty ID exception, empty name exception, invalid hourly rate exception, invalid hours worked exception, and numeric error exception. All right, now putting that in, did that remove the error that I had? Yes. Er Maybe this is where I have to put that. Nope, I still have that. Throws this. Well, I only have three of them listed here. I don't, I've got an empty name, an empty ID, a numeric, and I need my two invalids here. name exception. Well, that says here, there's empty name exception. I have an empty name exception. Empty name exception. Extends exception. Empty name exception. Except, uh, exception. I'm going to get, as soon as I figure out this error, I'm finished. Throw new empty name exception. statement in there. Oh, they're all there. I'm just wordsmithing because what I just did isn't going to change anything.
think in my demo, I don't believe I need any of these. I think that's correct the way it is right there. You can see it's recognizing it because it's not giving me an error. The problem is in here, throw new empty name exception. And to my knowledge, that is totally legit. That didn't change anything, but it's a little cleaner because it was very, what I did was, actually what I have here is repetitive, so. Unhandled exception. Well, empty name exception is right here, and it's being handled empty name exception, extends exception, public empty name exception. looking for something. I'm trying to figure out something that looks wrong here. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause this because I'm already at eight minutes and see if I can figure out what the problem is. And if I can, I'll come back and let you know. All right, I think we had some pilot error here. And I think the reason I got that was that for each one of these, I have to say that in the routine, I was saying it up here, but technically it's not main that is doing that. I probably will find out. I'm going to see if I can get rid of this. And this. And this. It says unhandled exceptions, so I do need them. All right, so I need them there and here. So let's try it now. File, save all, run, run my driver. Error, no employee name entered. Perfect. All right. So my exception was called. How do I know that? Because no employee name entered is exactly what I told it to say here. All right, so fantastic. Let me try the next one. All right, so this will be worker three. So we will have an, a name. but we will have an employee number. If I 
put in here hello. Now it's going to give me an error here because it said, yeah, I understand that. Huh. This will be a harder one. So, in fact, if I put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I'm going to get an integer number too large. This is going to be a hard one to check because I could try to leave it empty, but if I leave it empty, I get an error because I don't have enough arguments. I don't know how I'm going to be able to test that one because it's going to actually catch it here. All right, this, one, this is actually going to work, what I'm going to put in right now. Error, no employee name entered. There it is. Okay. All right. Hmm. Not sure how I'd even test that one. So for now, at least, I'm going to leave it out. And it's the same thing with number four. Because these are both, one is an empty ID and one is a non-numeric ID, but it's it's not going to catch it because it's it's never going to be allowed to happen anyway. So I'm going to get rid of number six. There's one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to try to check the invalid hours worked and the invalid hourly rate. So that'll be four. That will be all right. So that is an invalid hours worked. File, save all, go to our driver and run it. We're in our driver. We should get the error that says. Error out of range, okay. So that worked. Finally, we'll try the same thing with our last one, which will say, give me an invalid number here. Invalid hourly rate entered. All right, so what I've shown you, did I do a good job? Well, it's done. But what I have attempted to show you here is how you can first write yourself a class and say that that particular class can possibly throw different exceptions. All right? And the reason that I had to put that inside of here is in my constructor right there. That's what this is. My constructor is calling the set functions. All right, you'll notice that set name throws an exception. Set number throws an exception. In fact, that one should say this, comma, invalid. was numeric. That was empty. Okay. We've got hours worked, which throws an exception, and hourly rate, which throws an exception. They all do. Alright, so I did that. Then I wrote each one of the exceptions. Our empty name, our empty ID 
which technically you can't do because it's going to break the rules when you try to instantiate the object. All right? Our numeric error, which again you can't technically do, our invalid hourly, which we tested, and our invalid hours worked, which we tested. And we're not even really using these two, so we can get rid of those. Again, it's just some extraneous code that we put in here. All right, so a file, save all, and you'll notice, and if I come back to my driver, and if I do take the one that's valid, which was the first one here, Right, so if I take that and run it, I do get valid output. There it is. Okay? So what I've attempted to do, you make your own mind up as to whether or not I did it successfully, is to come in here and show you how to create your own user-defined exceptions. Now I am done what I'm going to try to do is one more program, and it's one that I wrote with the Eclipse editor, so I have not tried to do something like this, but I'm going to attempt to do a GUI, a GUI Java program with IntelliJ IDE, which I have never done. All right, and I'm hoping that I can do this without any kind of problem. All right, and I'm going to do that next, and then the rest of the ones that are in here, and this is going to look confusing to you, don't worry about it, all right, but I've got some GUI programs, some uh, advanced GUI programs, etc. I've got about three or four of these that I created earlier using the Eclipse editor. I'm going to see if I can save those over to here. All right, and you might say, well, why, that won't be hard. It's problematic, okay? I'm not gonna say it's hard. So I'm going to attempt to do that next. Okay, I'll be back shortly.